Hi there, it's Carrie Palmer, and I am doing a different sort of video. I'm doing this at the request of a friend. Um, and so I'm doing it in a setting that he chose. I was actually inspired to like completely clean the rest of my house that I moved into, the living room, the kitchen. And it is so cozy that I guess we're doing it here. And he also told me to pour a glass of wine. Okay, so I have a dear friend. His name is Scott, and he was a huge part of my story. He was part of my class in the Monroe Institute in September in Virginia of 21. And we had quite a, an amazing connection. Scott and I had a big story that we had to go through together, but that's not what we're talking about. Scott and I were very close and I knew what his life was about. And so I wanna tell you why he killed himself. And he has been pestering me um, to, get a, to get this out, to share his story because he needs to save you from doing the same thing that he did. Um, my dear friend, Maria Elena, she can just go in and out of her body and I can't do that stuff. So she did a soul retrieval and she found him at a resting place that was peaceful. He needed peace. So I'll explain how I met Scott and why Scott killed himself and why it doesn't have to happen. So when I met Scott at the Monroe Institute, I went to the Monroe Institute as a very spiritual person who didn't really meditate much. I didn't know how to meditate much, but I went there wanting to just learn everything. It was called peak week, five different days, like five different course samples to play with. And there was a very, it was the first week that Nancy Penn Center opened after COVID. And we were the first group back. There was only nine of us there and a few instructors, the cooks, it was very minimal, but boy, did the energy in that place when all of these bodies came back and it had been dormant for what, a year and a half, just the energy was swirling in the place. So we were there at the perfect time. It was magical. So Scott and I met, I mean, I heard him talking. There was three or four people in the group who were very leaders in business. So I come here as a really woo-woo spiritual person, just hoping to like find new ways to be woo-woo to find out more. Because it was like, it's like I was just expanding. I was learning so much. So Scott, what Scott did, and a, a couple of these other people, Scott, he had a five-year plan. Fortune 100 company, five years live in the hell of the fast lane and then be done and retire to a life of bliss. Somehow he was taught that, that that would be the way, what he needed to do. I don't know where he got that, but that was Scott. So I overheard some conversations with him and this one woman who's a corporate trainer. And there was other people that all talked about their business, their life. And I'm like, in my mind, I came there because my life has become this it's like it became my life and so i was fascinated on how these people came here to where they would just forget that part and do these meditations and have successful soul retrievals and just have the most incredible time but then they could go back to this life of stress and madness and i looked at i was like i couldn't understand how they did that but they did so scott the first thing that happened with us, the first conversation is I heard him talking and I was out walking. I always walk the grounds and I got guidance for him. So I went into the building and I said, you, me, come talk. <laughs> he didn't know anything of what I was doing. And I said, I just got guidance from you for you. I don't know anything about you, but I said, you are trying to squeeze yourself into a tube of toothpaste and you need to knock it off. And he said, I know. And that's when he told me about the five-year plan, the fortune 100 and the stress that he was under. So the course of the week, we became very close. Just we had a lot in common. We were both very like want to be not be fit. We're just athletic. We just want to go play. We want to go walk. We want to go swim. We're going to ski. We have energy like crazy. So we had a lot in common. And there was just a real pull, but it wasn't romance. It wasn't attraction like that. There was just a real connection with us. And so as the week went on, Scott told me a lot about his life. And his father was murdered when he was 12 years old. And Scott was an only child. His mother was doing okay. And so he had the weight of the world. Dad died. Mom raised him. And then I think it may, maybe it was dad's messaging that he had to fortune, you know, whatever the plan was. Who knows how we get our story, that what we think our goal is, why we think we need to do it. So Scott was telling me, and I said, are you married? Do you have kids? No, he was 57 years old, never been married, never had kids, not really relationship material, kind of, you know, just like had to figure it out. Um, 
like did research on like the best skis, the best bikes, the best toys, because that was his world. And he would give himself a day before he would actually purchase it, like a cool off period. He reminded me a lot of my ex, just like had to have the best toys. He owned two places, three places. He rented out places and he basically lived in a basement or just small spaces. Yes, he had three places. Uh, Whitefish, Montana, and then two in Colorado. And he just, he left his life so small so he could make the money. He was doing Airbnb. He was making the big plan, putting it together. And so Scott had all this stuff going on. So on the last day of our meditation, our class there at the Monroe Institute, Scott was going to do a prep session in the morning. And he was very nervous about it because he was going to face something he didn't want to face. A prep session at the Monroe Institute, and I guess it depends on you. Maybe it doesn't work for everybody, but Scott wanted to be taken back to the scene when his dad was murdered, and he wanted to be there. He wanted to see it. He wanted to understand it because he's had to live his whole life hearing about it, so he wanted to go there. Scott didn't like the dark. He had a real hard time with it. So the the day of his prep session, he went to the first part of class and then he went to the prep session and I'm like, just get back to me when you're done. Okay. We'll talk. So when he was done, he came back to the class and he explained what happened. And then when it, that was done, he pulled me aside and he explained further. So he did go into the prep session. And of course you're in this like waterbed, you have the headphones, you've got sensor stuff all over. I don't, I've never done it. So I don't, I can't ex explain it. So he had, he was ready to have this experience, but he was freaking out because it was dark. And then suddenly he said, I appeared as light. Basically, he's like, I've wrapped my angel wings around him and I held him and I shined the light during the entire session. So he was comfortable and completely capable to go through the entire experience. And he did. So he explained to the class how he saw it. He was there. It was hard. But he told me that you were there. We give each other gifts. And that's one of the things. Scott is in my book. Scott, I met three men. My second book's about Alden. And then you'll learn all about Scott. Scott was going to be a big player in my life. We had so much connection. We really connected. And I know, I know he was dying to call me. He was dying to call me, but he didn't. And then for Scott to kill himself, it took so much but here's what happened when scott would go to the monroe institute and he's one of those people i think when i met him he'd gone to 15 classes and it's like each one's like five days long and it's a transaction you have to fly from him from colorado to virginia it's a small you have to get there it's a travel day my friend louise she had her like two travel days to get there but you go there and you go there for the experience. So when I met Scott and he met me, he met me as this woo woo crazy lady that was just there to expand and learn and grow. And I did, I had an amazing experience there. And then when the last day, it was like, we ended up connecting romantically, but not, it was like the connection was so intense. We just couldn't get close enough to each other. It was like, the need to connect at a deeper level. So we went to his room and basically we had a little makeout sesh. It was no big deal, but it was like, we became one. It was like, uh, this has happened to me with three people to where you enter a bubble and you are no longer part of anything else. You are just one and you are so connected. And so Scott and I had a plan coming into this life that we were going to meet and we, he gave me a gift and it'll all be explained in the book. The gift he gave me was phenomenal. The gift I gave him was being there for him during that prep session and to always be there for him. We were very close. We stayed in touch. So when I went to visit him in Whitefish and I was this woo woo person when he met me and then we were talking all the time on the phone and other ways. And so this is the first time we got together physically where we actually got back together since Monroe. So I go to Scott's and I met this man who left the Monroe Institute. I'm going to cry. He introduced me to his guides, green guy, drilly. I mean, I know stories like things he did in the outer worlds with his guides that he is capable of doing anything to blast through any doors, drilly got him through anything. Before he went to the Monroe Institute for the last time, he called me and he said, who are my guides? Because what Scott does, what a lot of people do, and I'm hoping to explain to you that 
they're not two worlds here. Scott would go to the Monroe Institute and it was like, to me, he opened his briefcase and the magic all spilled out. And he did these meditations, some of the stories and the experiences he had. One time I did one meditation that's all in the book that was magical and it told me to go do cartwheels. So I missed the next meditation because I was so spinning with energy. And so I went out in the land and I did cartwheels. When their meditation was over, they came out, Scott, like, what are you doing? And I lifted up my hands up for dirty. He goes, what were you doing? I said, cartwheels. He's like, no freaking way. He was just told, go do cartwheels. We are so connected people. So when we're at the Neuro Institute, we connect where I am all the time. Woo woo. We go back and I go to visit him in Whitefish and he's going to be working. So I'm going to go poke around and hike and check out Glacier and all the places around there. And then we're going to hang out in the evening. He did work all day with this Fortune 100 company and I witnessed him having these meetings. Oh my God. And then he would look at me and he's like, what's wrong with you? Why are you so weird? I'm like, Scott, I'm always this way. I'm like, so he... What Scott does is he would go to the Institute and I, that's the only place he went. He didn't have other places where he went for retreats. He went there and he opens up the magic bag and it all spills out and he becomes, he does the meditations. Everything works wonderfully for him. Everything was simple. It's magical. And then after we had our connection, our, we, I mean, it was magical. We spent some time together. Then we ended up having the same shuttle, the same flight, everything we had impeccable time together to really connect and for him to feel universal love at the stratospheric level this man held my hand so tight on the plane and he said i always sleep on airplanes but i can't because i don't want to miss one minute of this feeling with you and i get it we both felt the same way it was so much bigger than the than either one of us it was a coming together of two people that had to come together and we didn't know why but we serve a purpose. We come here to give each other a gift. So before he left and he had to run to his airplane, I mean, it was magical. He looked at me so deeply in the eyes before he kissed me goodbye. And he said, I can't even describe the amount of love I feel for you. And I said, I know. When you have that connection at the spiritual level, at the stratospheric level, it's un it's un indescribable. There are no human words. We both felt it. And that's why we had such a draw to get back together. And that's why we didn't wait till November. I went to Whitefish and we spent time together. That was absolutely magical. But he completely turned that switch off. He was none of that. He was not the man at all that I met at the Monroe Institute. That part of him did not exist. He had some meditations and some things that he would consider doing at times. But he dove into Fortune 100, stress, get the job done. That was his focus. That was all he could do. And I'm like, I, oh, we had a many conversations, but Scott honestly could not comprehend how I could be so weird all the time. So what I'm trying to teach you is we come here with these plans and the plan is the ultimate plan is to find our way home. Our way home is becoming enlightened and just being so okay with being one with you because you're no longer alone. You're, all, you're connected to all that is. That's why Scott has been with me nonstop for the last few days. I did write a blog post, but it wasn't right. I knew he wanted me to do a video because I do videos and blog posts, you can't see my hands going everywhere. So Scott has been writing me the last few days to get this video done because he wants you to understand that the spiritual world, that is the only real world and when you play in stuff like that, when you go to it and then you leave it and then you think you're trying to fit yourself in this box that you've always fit yourself into, but it doesn't feel good, it's because you know better. The part of you that has touched that other part knows that's not right. Every part of you is being eaten up inside because you know that is not your path, but you keep doing it. You keep going because somewhere, somehow, that's what you were taught. Stop it. If you're feeling off, if anything in you is out of alignment, go outside, get to nature, be alone and say, what is going on with me? What am I really feeling? And give yourself the time to listen. If Scott would have called me, he would not be dead. I sent him a text message in early August because I was finally going to be using my, I finally got that pass. I can't remember what it's called, that you get to fly and you don't have to, you just go through, through NSA quickly. You don't have to go through that. So Scott traveled well. 
So I was saying, hey, I'm traveling with my past for the first time. I don't have to take up my laptop, my shoes, whatever. So I left him a message and asked him some questions and I never heard back. And then I heard much later that he offed himself. And I don't know how, it doesn't matter how people kill themselves. When your body's dead, it's dead. It doesn't matter if you swallow something, if you stick a knife, you know, however you do it, you do it. But he is still here. Scott knows now because Scott went to a Tibetan monastery, a peaceful place, so he could process, wow, I got so lost in my human story that I believed that. He believed being financially successful, having all this stuff done by the time he retired was exactly what he was supposed to do. And then he'd have everything. But Scott kept going back and opening up this other side of him. And he did not understand this is the reality. The woo woo, once you crack that open, you need to follow that path because the real world, you're not going to feel like you fit in anymore. So Scott, I know it killed him because he got a dog not long ago. His dog was gone and he needed a dog. So he went through hell to get this dog from across the country. The dog's name was Finn, Australian Shepherd, the love of his life. And so he was his new travel buddy, hiking buddy, companion. And I don't know what happened with Finn. I'm just like, how? That part disturbed me because I knew for Scott to leave. I mean, and I'm trusting completely that Scott had a beautiful home for Finn, but he knew it was not fair because that dog had already been uprooted from the person that loved him. And then he was going to lose the person that loved him. And so for Scott to do this, it had to be really bad and to leave his mother. And I've tried to find his mother. He had a rare name. He's not on social media. I will put pictures of him. You can see him. He was a beautiful guy and it was such a waste. Scott, thank you. I think this video is important. People have expectations of who they think they're supposed to be at a young age when they're older. And we get so confused because things that we feel inside are telling us something different. What I tell anybody who wants to commit suicide, and this is the God's honest truth. If you are so ready because your life is so bad that you want to die, do this. Plan out your bank account. Go buy a ticket to France. Just go somewhere. Go to Hawaii. Go somewhere. Change your scenery and see how you feel. Because once you get away from everything that's causing the upheaval in your body, you can start paying attention to what the upheaval has been trying to tell you. When you're surrounded by people who are telling you the way your life is supposed to be and how it's supposed to work out, you're out of alignment and you just want to die sometimes. I know I did three times, man, three times, man. I even wrote a suicide note when I went on cruise. I was jumping off the ship, but I was told I have work here to do. And so I'm doing it. And so now when people like Scott come to me and say, get my video out there, I do it because I don't talk to anybody ever. I actually went to lunch with three neighbors today. I met a lovely couple that are going back to their Southern California home. I know not to walk at night now because there's like, there are bears out there at night. I'll put the picture up of that too, so you can see it two years ago next door. So we come here to find our way to this. And Scott found his way to this, but he kept thinking the other part was real. And now Scott is coming to you from the other side after peace and rest and getting in realignment with himself, he wants you to know that part is not real. That part is what will kill you. That is the part that will confuse you and drive you crazy. I'll miss Scott. I don't miss people that I really planned on him being in my future. We had so much more to talk about. Scott, I love you. Thank you for letting me do this for you. Be peaceful. Namaste.